Hi, today I want to talk about why you shouldn't really think about getting into tech if you want to make money. People will get confused by this. They'll ask questions like, should I get into that field? I heard there's money in that field. And I'll say no, and they'll go, well, what do you mean? There's a lot of people who make good money in that field. And it's like, oh yeah, it is, but it's not something that you're going to get into. And, they, and often when I make my full explanation, they're kind of offended. So before I get into that, I like to tell a little bit of a backstory on uh, my business and people who come in asking to get their iPhone or their MacBook screen replaced. So over the past, I would say, seven and a half years, I've never had somebody come in the door and say, can I get my iPhone cover replaced and who's actually gotten it fixed? Seven and a half years, not a single person has said yes to it. And this is something that I used to think about. And it's something that I also have explained to my receptionist. If somebody comes in asking if they want their iPhone cover replaced, you don't even need to turn around or get out of your chair. Just you say yes, say the price, and they'll walk out. And it's 100% of the time. And I want to explain this a little. So when somebody says, can you replace my iPhone screen? Can you replace my LCD? Can you fix this? When they say fix this, they're acknowledging that you need to be something of a technician, that there is actual repair going on. When they say LCD or screen, they're acknowledging that that's a piece of tech. And that is a part that may cost money. And that also that I would need a skilled technician to put that in. But when they say cover, deep down inside, they're in the mindset that this is something like snapping a case on that any idiot can do. And that it's also like one of those 50 cent cases that you buy at the dollar store that costs virtually nothing. So when you tell them that it's going to be 65 plus tax, they're shitting themselves because they're like, oh, at the price, because they really think it's easy as, when they say cover, they think it's as easy as snapping a, a case on, and they think that the screen is not, you know, something that costs a dollar. So that's why in eight, you know, almost eight years now, nobody has ever said yes to getting any type of work done when they've referred to it as a, a cover. And the same thing I think holds true in tech when people go, can I get into this field? And it's really something that I noticed more and more often with the practical board repair school that I was doing with Jessa Jones. So, you know, there were so many people that I was literally begging over the phone to not come to this course. Don't give us $2,000 because I don't want it because you are using all the wrong terms. You think that this is a field where you're going to come to this class and two weeks later you're going to be making like $65,000 a year. And, and the thing that you need to realize about any sub-niche field in tech, whether you're fixing motherboards and laptops, whether you're uh, you know, a systems administrator, whether you're, um, uh, you, know, you work on Cisco networks, whatever it is that you do, is that the people who are really, really good at tech are the people who do this from 8 to 4. Then they go out to the bar with their friends from 5 to 6 or 7. But then when they get home at the end, the end of the day, they're still playing with this stuff. They're, they're setting up an FTP server to deal with 100 users where they have a registration form where it automatically creates a username and they're using some script to do that. Or they're setting up an uh, IP network in their apartment just for fun because they want to see if they can you know, get rid of their phone company when it's going to cost the same either way just because it's fun to set up some new type of network. Or they're going to be, you know, like, if, if somebody like me, instead of you know, buying a headphone amp for $100, I might just buy a bunch of crap online and try to build something according to this website, there was this website where you had something called a CMOI where you could build a headphone amp inside of an Altoids can. Like, that, I'm going to spend hours doing that and I could have spent a little bit more and gotten the same thing. But that's, I do that on my spare time because I'm interested. So my point here is if you see tech as a job, if you see this as just a job or just a way to make money, the reason that you're going to fail is not because there is not money in this field. It's because you're competing with people who do it for fun. So they do this during their day to make money, but when they're done, when they clock out of work, they spend another two or four to six hours working, and it's not for money. It's because they actually enjoy figuring it out. They actually enjoy tinkering with it. So that last video that I posted about a week ago about Andrew's motherboard, where you can see that there's a bunch of wires going to the fan, and there's a FET on the fan, and a fuse in the fan, and there's wires going everywhere. I charged him for that because, it, because it, I put work into it, but ultimately my motivation there was not to make the money. My motivation there was just out of the sheer curiosity to see if it worked. The sheer fun of seeing that, that fucking fan spin and that screen come on and that thing chime when it looked like that with that many wires, I found that fun. That's something that I would have done on my spare time. And if you want to get into this business and you want to work between the hours of eight and four, that's great. But at the same time, you just got to realize that you're competing with people that when they get out of work at five or six or seven o'clock, they're going to spend another four to six hours fucking with this stuff out of the sheer fun of it. And those are the people that are, should get into the field, the people that don't use that type of terminology like, should I just get into networking? Should I get into phone system setup? 
Again, if you want to get into these things, that's great. If you want to get into camera systems, that's fine. But you got to realize you're competing with people that are playing with the WDR settings on their cameras at 3 in the morning when they can't sleep and checking all, all these different DVR systems just for the sheer fun of it. And like, you know, just the other day, I wanted to see how long can this Cat6 cable go before I lose the signal with infrared and without infrared on this camera. Like, I actually have that in my head. I know for this specific camera and this wire exactly how long I can go before I lose power on the infrared and before I lose power altogether because we were sitting there recrimping network cables over and over again because I'm curious and I want to know that. That's not a question you find an answer to on the internet. You find all these different answers and none of them are, you know, I think it should do this. The standard says it should do this. I heard that somebody did that. I know the actual number. And because I know the actual number, when I quote people for installations, I can quote them better than you can because you're quoting them based on needing hardware that you may not actually need or even worse, you're assuming something's going to work when it's not going to work, which means you underbid me, but then you've got to go back to your customer and tell them the price is going up because you need all this extra equipment and crap. If you're competing with people who are always spending time on the field, then you're going to get owned because you're not putting the time in to learn these things that I am. And I'm putting the time in to learn it because I'm interested. So if you see this as a job, if you see this as just like an 8 to 4 or a 9 to 5 job, and then you go home and you're done with tech, you're fucked. I'm telling you that you're fucked and you're going to be stuck on the lower echelon of it and you're going to hate it because you're not succeeding where other people are. And the people who really succeed in any type of tech-related business are people who, again, had like I've had dreams about what was wrong with the motherboard. I'm not kidding. I had a dream that this was it and I fixed the fucking motherboard in my dream because I checked something that I forgot to check during the day. I rode my bike back to work when it's 40 degrees outside at 3 in the morning. I came here, I fixed it, I got, and then I went back home. And this is on stuff where the customer disapproved, so I wasn't even really getting paid for it. I just wanted to see if that worked, and they wound up getting back a working machine, whatever. We just, when they, when they t come to pick it up and they see it turns on, we'll just say, if you feel like leaving a tip, enjoy. But th th that, that's the c who you're competing with. You're competing with people who are thinking about this stuff who, because they find it fun outside of work, which means that it's not, never going to be fair. So you're putting 40 hours a week and all these other people are putting this extra 30 hours outside of work into it. Who do you think is going to be more successful? Who do you think is going to be more knowledgeable? Who do you think is going to be more authoritative on the subject? It's going to be the people who love what they do. And this is also something that even outside of tech kind of comes up with this YouTube channel. YouTube is kind of creative in content creation. So even though my YouTube channel is mostly on tech and how to make money in, in the field of tech uh, through doing things that other people don't know how to do, a lot of my, my YouTube channel, you know, YouTube is a creative field. So, you know, just this year since I put ads up, people have been making comments like, well, I have a right to complain about this thing in this video because you have ads in it. Therefore, I am your customer, to which I've always, again, responded, you know, the X button is on this corner of the browser. Or if you're using a Mac, it's on this corner of the browser. Actually, I think it's the other way around. If you're using Windows, it's on this corner. And if you're using a Mac, it's on this corner. Either way, you'll find either a red button or an X somewhere over here, and you can click it if you don't like the content. I do this content for me because I enjoy doing it. I don't do it to make a living. You know, I started this in 2012, and I started, my main motivation was actually after reseller ratings, almost, you know, wanted to quadruple or octuple my rates, and I, I was irritated at it, so I, and I felt irritated at it, so I decided I'm going to tell the world about this because it seems like a silly injustice. And then, like, a lot of people were linking to it and talking about it, and I found that fun. So... Right now, you know, in the beginning of the channel, I probably made enough money to pay probably not even my not even the internet bill that I needed to upload this stuff to YouTube. Then it got to a point where I could pay my electric bill off it. Then it got to a point where I could pay my electric bill and my con ed bill off of it. Now it's at the point where I could probably pay a part time employee off of it. And people, you know, they will think, you know, oh, is doing YouTube a good idea? Should I get into YouTube to make money? Because they see that in uh, believe that, that that there's money being made off of it from what I'm doing. But you have to realize that I was sitting here doing videos for years before I even monetized it. I was sitting here showing you, here's how you fix a laptop motherboard. Here's how you solder a QFN. Before I had a microscope camera where I had a, you know, I had to use tape on the tripod and, and, and tape it to the fucking shelf so that I could get it at the right angle so it wouldn't weigh my cheap tripod down so that I, that I could show you what I'm doing. I was here talking about random subjects that I thought may have been of interest to people. Well, you know, I was doing that back when it made $0 a month. I was doing that back when I made 10 bucks a month. I was doing that for many years before I actually had real monetization. And with YouTube, again, when people think that this is what's going to make you successful, you know, it's people who are honestly not in it for the money. They're in it for the fun. And the money, here's the thing with money. Money is kind of the score. 
Money is not really the defining attribute of why I do some of these things. Money is simply the score. If you are good at something, you will be able to charge money for it. If you're getting, you, you shouldn't get into a game just because you want a high score. You should play the game because you find it fun. If you, are, if you love the game and you find it fun, you'll find a way to be good at it, and then you'll get a high score. But getting into a game just because you want the high score, it's never going to work. It really isn't. Like, if you go into an arcade and you see that there's somebody with a high score, and you're like, I'm going to play that's like beat that high score, you're going to lose. The people who love that game are the people who earn that high score because they enjoy it. And the same goes here. You know, with, with, with let's say, um, with YouTube, you know, I make money off of YouTube. Yes, I do. But that, that, that's just really the score. I didn't get into this because I said, let's see how much money I can make a month off of YouTube. If I did that, I would have put up a bunch of videos. I would have made up a bunch of crap that probably didn't really make any sense. I would have seen that, damn, I'm only making a dollar this month. Next month, I make three bucks. Next month, I make five bucks. If I'm doing it for the money with how much money it costs to live in New York, I would have just screw this and, 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 and you know, said goodbye. But now it's making something, and it's because I put years into it before, before uh, I got to the point where I am now with it. Where I am now with it, really, I'm, again, far from ever making a living off of YouTube. I got. I have a real job for that, and there are some channels, you know, where, where people like uh, PewDiePie, for example. It's a it's a gaming channel where he makes funny commentary as he's playing video games, and he edits them in creative ways. And there are a lot of people that are like, "You're in it for the money. You do this for the money. Look how much fucking money this asshole makes." Blah blah blah. Because it was announced recently that he made something like seven point four million dollars last year, and that rubs the people a lot of the wrong way. They look at it in these basic terms, like he films video games and he makes seven point four million a year. That motherfucker. And the thing to realize is that, you know, again, as he said in one of his earlier videos, I found this fun. I did it because it was fun. And it just so happened that I was good enough at it or enough people were interested at it that I could make $7.4 million a year. The $7.4 million is like, I sincerely doubt that he said, let me film a silly video where I have a little shit icon jumping across the screen as I'm shooting people in some club while I'm playing a game and yelling, ah! and I'm going to get $7.4 million. Something tells me that was not his idea when he started his YouTube channel. But since a lot of people liked it, the content he had to put out there, the score, the money, showed up. He did all of that work before he ever made a dime on it. It took, a, it took time and effort for that dude to get to a point where anybody cared about his channel. It took time and effort to get to a point where anybody watched that channel. You know, I, I remember, like, I, I, I used YouTube in 2010. Nobody knew who the fuck that dude was. And you're pissed off because, he, because he's successful. But what you have to realize is you want to get into doing something just to get the money out of it. And the people who are really good at it are the people who were there doing it because they loved it before there was money there. So if you will only do something if there's money in it from the beginning, you're probably not going to succeed as well as people who are doing it because they love it and they care about it because they're going to build the infrastructure. They're going to build a fan base. They're going to build a customer base. They're going to build their own knowledge base before there's money there. So by the time they get to a point where there is money there, they're prepared. They have the infrastructure. They have the knowledge. They have the customer base. They have the fan base. They have the staff. They have the people that they know that can help them because they were doing all this stuff. They built all of it before the money was there. And so if you want to just get into tech, if you want to get into motherboard repair because you think it's going to make you money, stop. Do not pass go. Do not hit that little button to reserve a class to practical board repair school because I'm telling you, you are competing with people who love what they do. You are competing with people who are doing this even if they're not getting money. Like you're competing with people who will fix it just to figure out that they can and then just, you know, probably take the parts off and use it on somebody else if that customer says no. And if you're competing with people who love what they do, who are doing this even when they're not at work, you're likely going to fail because you're not putting as much time and effort into learning the craft as they are. So do yourself a service and go into a field where you can work from 8 to 4 and be very successful. Because I'm here to tell you that technology in any way, shape, or form is not the profession where that's what you do.